So we know that all cells need chemical energy in order to fuel all of life's functions, in order to reproduce, in order to obtain more energy, um, in order to perform homeostasis. And so how is it that our bodies are able to convert the chemical energy that we take in, or unicellular organisms take in energy, and how do they convert it into a usable form? So the chemical energy that's used for most cell processes is carried by the molecule known as ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. Three phosphates involved in this. So the molecules that we use are in food are store chemical energy in their bonds, right? We've studied that already. We've looked at starch molecules. We've looked at glucose molecules. So we've got complex carbohydrates in the starch versus simple sugars like glucose. So ATP transfers energy from the breakdown of food molecules to cell functions. So exactly how does that work? Well, the energy is released when a phosphate group is removed. Then ADP, or adenosine diphosphate that only has two phosphates, is changed into ATP when the phosphate group gets added. So when you look at that diagram, right here is where the phosphate gets added. So star that in your notes. And that forms the triphosphate molecule right here, one, two, three. And over here is where the phosphate gets removed. That releases energy, forming ADP, or diphosphate two phosphates. So organisms break down carbon-based molecules to produce ATP, right? Carbohydrates are the molecules most commonly broken down to make ATP. They are the fast source of energy in your body. So they're not stored in large amounts. And you can get up to 36 molecules of ATP from just one glucose molecule. So that's actually quite a bit. And here's just a diagram that I put at the bottom of the page for you that shows the difference between the triphosphate and the diphosphate. Okay. Now, fats store the most energy. We know that. It gives you longer lasting energy, and it takes longer for you to break it down. It's 80% of the energy that's in your body. You can get about 146 ATP from a single triglyceride. That's pretty, pretty large impact on your energy stores. Proteins are the least likely to be broken down by ATP. Amino acids, not usually, um, needed for energy, so you can't really break down the amino acid and get very much out of it, um, and, but they can produce about the same amount of energy as a carbohydrate. So when we look at the comparison, we can see that with these molecules, carbohydrates, four calories, lipids, fats, give us the most energy at nine calories per milligram, and then proteins are equal at four. There are a few types of organisms that do not need sunlight and photosynthesis as a source of energy. At this point in the video, would you pause the video if you're listening right now and ask Mrs. Learned a question if you're in class. Just ask an intelligent question about energy. Um, it could be about what would give you more energy, chicken or fish, or um, butter versus I don't know, yogurt. Just come up with something, pause the video, and ask me. Then come back to us. So the last bit of our notes is about the fact that some organisms um, do not need sunlight and photosynthesis as a source of energy. One of the first things that we're going to talk about in this unit is going to be the process of photosynthesis and how we actually get energy from it. Some organisms live in places that never actually get sunlight but they're still considered autotrophs. So how is that possible? Well, they use that process called chemosynthesis. Remember the prefix chemo refers to chemical, and synthesis is building, or putting together, or producing carbon-based molecules. It's very, very similar to photosynthesis, but it uses chemical energy instead of light energy from the environment. One example, and you might want to jot this down underneath um, in this section of your notes. One example are those deep ocean vents that are at the bottom of the ocean that are pitch black, they're completely anaerobic, there's no oxygen really down there, um, but you have 
some animals that can live there called tube worms. But the tube worms can only survive if there are bacteria present because the bacteria are able to convert the hydrogen sulfide coming out of those vents, the inorganic chemical, into carbon-based molecule like sugar for them to use as energy. So from here, we're going to be looking at photosynthesis and how producers convert light energy into a carbon-based molecule. And then later on, we're going to be looking at how do heterotrophs convert the food that we take in into ATP into that usable form.